your link, it won't be there. Okay. And are we going to be ready for this this website? Because people want to know, you know. Oh, shut up. <laughs> oh, my gosh, no. Oh, no. no. Welcome to Deer Droppings. As you can see, we like to have a little bit of fun around here, and uh, Lori was not expecting that, but uh, we'll see if that little cut makes it onto the Deer Droppings this month. Now that I've mentioned it, I think it pretty much has to, so I think she's out of luck. Uh, as we had just said, Deer Droppings and the, the website are taking a whole new look. If you look around the, the new website, and I'm, I'm actually in faith saying that it's online right now, and I'm pretty sure it will be, uh, you're going to see that the visual look of our site has changed a lot, and we've tried to make it a lot more user friendly. We just found that there's so many things going on within our site that people are actually getting confused and no longer knew where to look around. So we are going to be shooting an introduction so that we will explain uh, where things are on the site. There is going to be a lot of new products that are added. We're actually adding stabilizers. We're adding software, digitizing software. We have a new uh, tablet PC called the Scribbler that we're actually offering online. And there's going to be uh, threads that you can actually order online as well. And they will correspond with the designs that you choose. The other thing that's uh, really interesting is individual designs are a lot easier to search for now. Before, uh, our search engine really wasn't up to par and we sold our designs mainly in packs. Now you're going to be able to go in and choose individual designs and it's going to be a lot easier to move around the site. So we're hoping that everybody enjoys the new site and we're looking forward to it and uh, we're going to be adding a lot of new products on a monthly basis. For this month's deer dropping, we're actually going to talk about file formats. And file formats are actually pretty confusing. There's so many of them out there. We actually offer 14 different file formats for each one of our designs. Now, I guess the, the thing to understand about files is that the digitizing software that, the, that you use, that you create the files in, that is your native tongue. So if you are using, let's say, Palette 5 software or Palette 6 software, you're creating a PES, a PES file. If you're using Artista software, you're actually creating an ART file. Now when you go in to edit those designs that you've actually created, you will have much better accuracy and be able to uh, rescale those designs and move around all the nodes uh, with a, a lot more ease than using another file format. Now you do not have to have the same software and the same type of machine. You can actually own a Janome machine and you can have uh, you know, the palette software. It really doesn't matter. They, they all communicate with each other and that's something that a lot of people don't understand when they first get into the industry. Now we actually have on all of our stock design packs this little EMB logo here. And we digitize in Wilcom software, and that's actually the software that we're going to have available online. And what that allows us to do is to resize any EMB file format with a lot more accuracy. And you've also probably noticed that we have that true sizer software that's available on the internet that you can download. Now we've done that for a reason, because we know that you're going to have a lot more success in rescaling and resizing our files if you use that file format that we digitized in. Now, uh, we're going to actually call up our software and I'm going to show you a little bit of a difference between file formats and actually calling up a file format in your native tongue, so to speak. So I'm going to open up a file and what I'm going to do is I'm going to digitize a very simple object. And we're going to start out as a circle and then we're going to actually put a little bit of a loop in that design. So there we've created a little circle with a little loop on it and it probably had about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sets of points to actually determine that circle. Now when I take that file and I am going to save it, I'm going to save it as a different file format. So I'm going to take that file and I'm going to save it as let's just say a PES file which is a baby lock file. Now once that file is actually saved I'm going to bring it back into my software and we're going to see what happens. So if I insert that same file that I just created in Wilcom and I am going to bring it in right beside the one that I created in Wilcom but I'm going to bring in the PES file and we'll actually make it a different color so that we can see it. 
and we'll move it right beside the other one. Now, when I highlight the first file that I created, I see the amount of nodes that I originally digitized. And as we said, there were around eight points. Now when I go to that second file, I can see that there's now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So what it's done is it has taken a look at that shape and it's brought it back into the software and it's recalculated the stitches. And when it recalculated the stitches, it defined it as a new object. So when you're bringing uh, file formats into your software that aren't in your software's native tongue, what it has to do is recalculate those objects and add a lot more nodes to actually create that shape. Now that's where you get a lot of problems where, with ease of use, and that's why standardly file formats, they usually say, can only be increased or decreased by about 15%. Now I'm going to come out of this software and give you an example of how well you can resize with an EMB file. So I'm going to call up the TrueSizer software and this is the one that you can download. It's a free download on our website and one of the most popular design packs that we've had recently is a monogram pack and it's actually called Fancy Monograms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Fancy Monograms and I am going to pull up this little A. Now, if we look at the stitch count on this A, you can see the stitch count right here is 2,595 stitches. Now, when I grab this file, and now I'm going to make it 200%, so I'm turning that 3-inch design into a 6-inch design, and it recalculated it, and the stitch count now is 5,553 stitches. So it has taken those stitches and it's taken the object and it's recalculated perfectly for the density that it was designed for. Now if I take a PES file or any other file that is not in the Wilcom EMB and I open that one, okay, it is going to have the original 2,589 stitches at three inches and now we're going to make this one 200 percent larger and what you're going to see is it's resized it but look at the stitch count there the stitch count is only 2,593 stitches so it only added about 15 stitches for going up double the size so you can see how one file is going to work a lot better than the other that's why using that EMB file format you'll have a lot more success now we're going to open up our Wilcom software and I'm going to show you another trick. Okay, now you're going to see the big difference. We're going to actually use our Wilcom software and we're going to pull in an EMB file and we're going to use the same letter A. So we will just call up EMB and we're going to place it on the screen. Now that is our native tongue as far as our file format is concerned. Now what we're going to do is we're going to insert a different file format, the same design, but this time we'll choose a PES file. And we're going to bring that in right over top of that file. So we'll place one beside each other, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to mirror this file so that we can get a good look at both of them. And we will zoom in to a small area of that design. Now, if I go in and I actually make both of them 100% bigger, so I'm going to take both of those files together and I'm going to make them from 3 inches to 6 inches high, what you're going to see is a big difference between the two files. Now, let's zoom in to a very small area, and this is where you really see the difference. If I turn on my actual stitches so that you can see the stitch penetrations, you can see that my underlay stitch right here, the underlay stitch was at 2.5 millimeters when I digitized it. Now when we blew it up 200 percent, it on this side you can see it actually made it 5 millimeters long because it just took that 2.5 millimeters and it blew it up twice the size. And you can also see that my underlay, which is very close to the edge, on this file right here. On this one right here, you can see how far away it is from the edge. It doubled the space. 
So that's where a big difference between the quality of designs is going to be. You're going to get a much better quality when you actually use an EMB file or if you have uh, Artista software, if you use your ART file, if you have uh, Palace software, you're going to use your PES file, and so on. Now, the other thing that you should remember is that there's certain file formats that are safer than others. Now, there's a file format called DST, and DST is the industry standard format in the commercial industry. It's actually a Tajima file format. If you're having problems with any of your files, usually I suggest for people to bring in the DST file and work from that because it doesn't get corrupted as easily as other file formats. It just is the actual stitches. It doesn't read any other language or any other data into that stitch file. With some of your file formats, what it does is it assigns colors. So you actually see the colors on screen uh, from the design. Now, an embroidery machine doesn't see colors. It only sees stops. It actually programs stops and that's why you change the thread. The machine sees a stop and you program it. It doesn't know the difference between green and purple and yellow and red. So within your files there's a lot of extra information that's added into it. With a DST file what you see is what you get. So that's a little bit of information on file formats and hopefully it'll take a little bit of the confusion out and I do strongly suggest that you download that TrueSizer program because it'll make your life a lot easier and it does actually resize uh, expanded file formats pretty well, much better than a lot of digitizing software does. So until next month, uh, we'll see you again and God bless.